Sky here with us with us this morning. And thanks for being here on this Imago Day in Sunday, where we're celebrating the image of God in all of us. Uh, also, it's Pride Sunday. So, I want to let you know that we have uh, one prayer request this morning. Uh, we are praying for Gene Moyer, uh, who was admitted to the hospital yesterday. Uh, he's had some seizures. He's doing better uh, this morning. So, prayers for him and for his family. For this time of privacy while they uh, uh, deal with this. So just prayers for the family this morning. Um, welcome to those worshiping online with us this morning. We're glad that you're with us as well, and we're glad to have the cameras backed up and running. So that's a prayer.
most beloved, and yet we can use, it can be easy to forget. In a world of scarcity and threats, in a world that is rarely satisfied, the greatest thing we can do is trust that we belong here. So let us now turn to confession to tell the truth of our lives, to trust that even here, God's love is boundless, boundless. Let us pray. Join us now, responsibly, in the sections that read all. Divine Creator, we come before you with humble hearts, acknowledging our shortcomings and seeking forgiveness.
and its unique means that being the only one of its kind. Unlike anything else. That sounds like a cool thing to me. Uh, today we're going to hear in the book of Mark how Jesus was unique. And in this scripture, it says even his family and religious leaders, they didn't really understand who Jesus was. He was unique. This is Pride Month. And we see a lot of rainbows. Have you guys seen rainbows? Yeah? Let's look around the um, church and see if you can find any bright colors. Bright colors of the rainbow. Yes, thank you. That's great. What about on the altar? Do you see bright colors over there?
and do not let the eunuch say, I am just a dry tree. For thus says the Lord, to the eunuchs who keep my Sabbath, who choose things that please me and hold fast my covenant, I will give in my house and within my walls a monument and a name better than sons and daughters. I will give them an everlasting name that shall not be cut off. And the foreigners who join themselves in the Lord to minister to him, to love in the name of the Lord, and be of his servants, all will keep the Sabbath, and do not profane it, and hold fast my covenant. These I will bring to my holy mountain, and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be accepted on my altar, for my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. Thus says the Lord God, who gathers the outcasts of Israel, I will gather others to them besides these already gathered.
Our gospel lesson this morning is Mark chapter 3, starting in the 20th verse. Here these words. And the crowd came together again so they would not even eat. When his family heard it, they went out to restrain him, for people were saying, He has gone out of his mind. And the scribes who came down from Jerusalem said, He has Beelzebul, and by the ruler of the demons he casts out demons. They called them and said to him, and they called to him and spoke to them in parables, How can Satan cast out Satan? If the kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided against itself, the house will not be able to stand. And if Satan has risen up against him and is divided, he cannot stand. But his end has come. But no one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his property without first trying out with the strong man. And indeed, the house can be cleaned. Truly, I tell you, people will be forgiven for their sins and whatever blasphemies they utter. But whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit can never have forgiveness, but is guilty of eternal sin. For they had said, He has an unclean spirit. Then his mother and his brothers came, and standing outside, they sent to him and called him. A crowd was sitting around him, and they said to him, your mother and your brothers and your sisters are outside asking for you. And he replied, Who are my mother and my brothers? And looking at those who sat around him, he said, Here are my mother and my brothers. Whoever does the will of God is my brother and sister and mother. May God have a blessing to the hearing and the reading of these holy words this morning. The struggle to recognize the image of God in each other is far-reaching in our culture, and it seeps into our church. Two weeks ago, the Southern Baptist Convention narrowly defeated an amendment to their constitution. This would have allowed the Southern Baptist Convention to remove from its ranks any churches that have women in pastoral leadership roles. When it was defeated, many people pointed out that this was Great because they already have a system in place that kicks out churches with women in the pulpits. It's great. We already have a system in place. We don't need this. And there are other measures in place that kick churches out that support women in the pulpit as well. So they're blessed all around with that. In fact, during that meeting, they overwhelmingly voted to kick out one of their churches that still had women in its leadership roles. In the previous year, they kicked out three churches, including Mega Church, Saddleback Church, out in, the, in California. In fact, they claim that this is the complementary way that God designed the world. Women are there to help men and complement the man's good qualities. Women and men have different roles, they say, and it may seem cruel to come to some, to not a lot of women pastors, but they are just honoring the order of things that God created. And the kicker, they blame the root cause of this on the LGBTQIA plus community for causing confusion about gender. It's all about the gay agenda. This is not honoring the image of God and women, nor LGBTQIA plus folks, and I would dare say it goes counter to Jesus' teachings, which they proclaim their adhering to. And today we are going to look at what God does have to say about the image of God and each other, and how we can better uphold that for ourselves and each other. The gay agenda isn't about confusing gender. It's not about highness or arrogance. It's not the bad things associated with pride in the Bible and Christian teaching. It isn't the type of pride you might think of when you hear the phrase, pride goes before the fall. It's not that type of pride. No, pride has a much different meaning for LGBTQIA plus folks. It's love. Love for ourselves, for our siblings, love which they haven't gotten in a lot of places in the world. 
And it's about claiming our rightful place in the world, a place and a right denied for centuries. The denial of a rightful place has been seen in the church in various aspects. I think of the contemporary Christian music artists who lost their career because they chose to be truthful about their sexuality. Vicky Beach, Michael Passons from that group, Adam, he just disappeared. Ray Bolts, Kurt Talley, the list is long. We've observed people distancing themselves from the church when LGBTQ individuals heard messages suggesting they could change and that God doesn't want them to be gay, that they are hated by God for that. These harmful teachings have caused significant damage to many in the LGBT community. In fact, there was an article on NBC News back in January. The headline read, Religious trauma still haunts millions of LGBTQ Americans. Some mental health experts are advocating for religious trauma to be considered an official disorder in the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual on Mental Disorders. It's a far-reaching epidemic. LGBTQ folks have been denied their rightful place in the world with you know, job protections for sexual orientation or gender identity and threats of appealing legislation that protects the community. And so pride, pride is about reclaiming that rightful place and celebrating that LGBTQIA plus folks deserve to be seen and heard and not squashed down in harmful legislation or religious practices and that they are indeed loved by God and each other. In the church, we call it Mago Dei Sunday. Mago Dei. It's a fancy word that means the image of God. The image of God in each person. Because God loves each one of us, regardless of sexual orientation or gender or anything. Nothing can separate us from in our scripture today, the legal religious experts are calling Jesus an agent of Beelzebub. They are saying that he is performing miracles and teaching the way he teaches under the power of the evil spirit. And Jesus warns them not to blaspheme the Holy Spirit. In other words, don't denigrate Jesus' ministry, which is of God. And he warns the dire consequences of doing this that they wouldn't be forgiven. Jesus is making a point, not just about denigrating his ministry. He's making a point about denigrating people in general. We're not to call people evil, we're not loved by God, we're not of God, we're not saved, because every person is made in the image of God. Every person has the Holy Spirit residing in them. God is inside each person. And we are not the dumb man. We're speaking ill of them because they are beloved children of God. Created and made with the careful, loving hands of God. And how dare we even speak ill of someone else? We must hold each other, especially our LGBT siblings, our black and brown siblings, our women, our children, as being of sacred worth and nothing less than a beloved child of God. We are to care for them with the utmost respect. We were to treat ourselves with the utmost respect. We have to learn to love ourselves as well. Hear me, my LGBT siblings, you are beloved by God. And nothing anyone can say, or preach, or make rules about, or legislate, can take away your love of God, your love from God, your belovedness. God loves you so much, you can't even probably put it into proper words. Know that in this space, you are safe. You are amongst the community of God. And we, as a community, need to repeat this message of love over and over and over again to the LGBTQIA plus community because they have been so harmed by the church. It's 
going to take a lot of love to overcome that damage. That's why we're out at Third Fridays. That's why we hang a pride flag out front. That's why we had pride in our parking lot yesterday afternoon with a fantastic turnout. That's why the people at that festival said to me, I can't believe there's a church like this in our neighborhood. A place I can be myself. That's why a teenager broke down to me at the last Thursday, third Friday, because he couldn't believe that God was for him, that there was a place where he could be and belong, because he belonged to a church that didn't love him as he truly was. There's a need for us to be the light bearers of love of God for all people. Continuing on with our scripture, Jesus is teaching and he's getting really popular and controversial. It says it was impossible for him to eat because it was so crowded in the house where he was. His family, his family, his mom and his dad and his brothers and sisters came to rescue him because they said he was out of his They came to took control of him, to get him under control because he obviously wasn't in his right mind. And the crowd tells him that his family is there looking for him. And he says, look, you are my family. You are my brothers and sisters. You do the will of God. That is who my family is. And Jesus, in that moment, realized he had his family, which wasn't being supportive, but he had these friends that did support him. It reminds me that Jesus understands the hurt and the pain LGBT folks experience at the hands of their families when they're rejected. And we're reminded too in this passage that sometimes the world or our families aren't there for us and that God gives us our family, our chosen family, our church family, our friends, Jesus can identify with us and knows the pain of rejection from people around us. I hope and pray that we can continue to be a safe space, a chosen family for all those who are marginalized by society, that we would live into that ONA covenant that we signed, proclaiming that we love all folks, regardless of gender, sexual orientation, disability, ability, addiction. I hope and pray that we continue to embody this and live this out because that is what Jesus calls us to do, to love all of those who are beloved by God. And that's everybody. In closing, we have done a lot of great work in marginalized communities, but there's still a ton of work ahead. As we go from this place, may we proclaim the love of God for all people. May we, may we proclaim that black and brown people are women, kids, addicts, and those with disabilities, the LGBT community, that they are all made in the end of God. May we help bring healing as we boldly proclaim that they are beloved, that they are in a safe space. May we boldly proclaim that God is in all people and
Let us now affirm our faith together. In joyful response to God's word, proclaim and affirm our faith in the one who created each of us with love. I invite you to join me in praying a poem by the Reverend Sarah's being titled, The Bravest Thing We Can Do. Trust your beloved of us. Let it be a protest, an act of resistance, a song of celebration. Trust your beloved of us in a world that is rarely satisfied. Wear it like a badge of honor. Speak it as confidently as your last name. Tattoo it to your heart. When outside forces chip away at your sense of self, when my God has. 
has for us with someone else. Maybe it's a coworker, maybe it's a family member, maybe it's you want to extend that grace to someone you don't know. Maybe, maybe it's to yourself to remember that you are loved. Over the next five minutes, as we listen to the song, I invite you to ponder that. And then we'll collect, we're going to collect the first slip, the one that's a word or a sentence, something that reminds you of your Okay, there's only okay, there's only one paper in your bulletin, so you'll just have to tear that and make two out of it. Um, so the first one, the one that reminds something that reminds you that you're beloved, that one you're gonna turn in the offering plate, and the offering plates are past them a little bit. The other one, the thing you're gonna do for someone else or for yourself. Is for you to keep it and hold on to. So I invite you now to ponder and think.
that you're heard and I That this works
pray. Amen. Please have a seat. Just a couple of quick announcements. Uh, Butch's sabbatical is over, officially starting tomorrow. So Butch is back in the office on the 1st. I'm going to see him in his return. So uh, make sure you reach out with uh, greetings and welcome backs. Um, I want to let you know that this week, uh, the church office will be closed on July 4th and July 5th. So uh, if you have any to take care of the office, make sure you get it done uh, by the weekend. Uh, Carol Reef has an announcement, so I'm going to invite her to come up to the lectern and make her announcement.
May the love that binds us together as one family chosen by God continue to inspire us to extend grace, compassion, love, and understanding to all that we encounter. Go now in the peace of God, the love of Christ, and the empowerment of the Holy Spirit.